This is a 3D printed 6 axis robot that can automatically switch out its end defector depending on the item it is trying to pick up. For a box with a flat surface, it can use a suction cup. For an item without flat surfaces like a screwdriver, it can drop off the suction cup and use a gripper. Now why would a robot need to switch out its end defector? Because robots have a problem. They do not have hands like us humans. We humans can very intuitively pick and place items of various shapes and sizes by orienting our hand appropriately. Without human-like hands, robots can't do that. Some companies and people are trying to build such hands for robots that are as dexterous as human hands, but honestly, that is not an easy feat to achieve. Another approach to solving this problem is that instead of giving robots one dexterous hand that can do multiple things, we can give them multiple hands and the ability to switch between them so that they can use the right hand for the right job. That is the goal here and this goal needs to be achieved in a month and a half because I decided to make my own life even more difficult by signing up to demonstrate this robot at the Maker Fair in San Francisco Bay Area which is a month and a half from now. So a quick background on this project for those who haven't watched my previous videos. I first built a 3D printed wireless belt driven actuator for a completely different application. As I was building it, I thought how cool would it be to arrange these actuators in a certain configuration and make a 6 axis robot out of them. So that's what I did in my next video. I built a wireless 6 axis robot. No wires ran between individual joints and the central controller. Each joint was independent with its own controller and they communicated with the central controller wirelessly. And it worked, but I realized that keeping the robot wireless came with its own drawbacks. All the electronic components like the stepper driver, microcontroller and the battery were attached to each actuator of the robot, increasing the weight of the actuator. So I had to use smaller components like stepper drivers and batteries which had lower current capacity. This imposed significant restrictions on the torque output of each joint. So I swallowed my pride, abandoned the dream of keeping the robot wireless and wired the robot. Look at this mess of wires I had to create. Wiring the motors, encoders and the PCBs took more than a week which is significantly longer than I had planned for. But now that that is done, here is a look at the overall system that needs to work together for the robot to work. The plan is to use ROS or robot operating system and a package within it called Move It for motion planning. This will allow us to provide XYZ coordinates and the orientation of the end defector to move it. Move It will do the motion planning for us and create a trajectory of points in terms of joint angles. This trajectory will be sent to this ESP32 controller. The ESP32 controller will then convert the joint angle values into number of steps for each of the stepper motors to travel and send the steps and the directions to the stepper drivers. The stepper driver will then drive the current to the motors making them move, in turn making the robot move and go to its desired position. In order for me to be able to send the motion trajectory to the ESP32, I needed to create what's called a ROS node on the ESP32. Nodes in ROS can publish or subscribe to topics. These topics contain messages which can be processed by the nodes. In our case, the ESP32 node will subscribe to the trajectory message published by MoveIt and then retrieve joint angle values from that message so that it can tell the motors how many steps to move. Sounds simple in theory, but it proved to be a nightmare to implement. I just could not get my ESP32 to talk to my ROS master. I kept getting this error message even when I was trying to use a very simple example code from the documentation. I tried everything that was suggested on the forums, but nothing worked. I spent almost a week trying. The panel just keeps changing. This does not want to cooperate. I finally gave up and in the interest of making progress, I decided to write my own communication protocol that will allow my ROS node to talk to my ESP32 controller. I will send specific messages over USB serial, the ESP32 will read them and based on the format of the message, the ESP32 will know what to do. While figuring out this home-brewed communication protocol, I was simultaneously working on the quick connect mechanism that will allow the robot to drop the end defector it is holding and then attach a new one to it. The idea behind the design for such a quick connect mechanism came to me from BNC cable connectors. The female side of these connectors has a groove in it. The male part slides in the groove and when you rotate the male and the female part in the opposite direction, it locks the two in. My design concept is similar where I have this male part attached to the robot. It will interface with this female part, push down on this spring-loaded flat surface and then rotate. It will get locked in as it rotates. I have this taper on the male part so that even if there are any positional inaccuracies, the taper will still guide the robot in and allow it to pick up the end defector. And of course, 
I got the design working in the first attempt. Doing it with my hand is one thing, but making the robot do these exact same movements, that is a different story. Coming back to the software side of things, after two full weeks of working on it, I finally had the communication between ROS and ESP32 working. But my magnetic encoders were sporadically giving weird angle values, which was messing up everything. Again, I spent a lot of time troubleshooting it. By a sheer stroke of luck, I found that the encoder values are always inaccurate when there is power supplied to the stepper motors. As soon as I turn off the power supply to the stepper motors, I start seeing accurate values. I thought maybe it is because the encoder wires are too tangled with the stepper motor wires which are carrying current and that is producing noise in the encoder wires. So I separated the stepper motor wires and the encoder wires. And voila, no more weird values and noise. I must admit, this was a very strange issue, but I was just happy that it got resolved. With only 12 days left for Maker Faire, things started to come together. I could direct the robot from ROS and make it go to specific coordinates and end effector orientations. Now I had to create a routine that will make the robot drop its current end effector and pick up a new one. My idea was for the end effector to be positioned on this tool rack. The robot will perform its routine to pick up or drop off an end effector. While doing so, it will latch on to the end effector using the quick connect mechanism, then slide the end effector in or out of these rods and go to its homing position. I was super excited when the robot did its first tool drop off. But soon I realized that doing this consistently was going to be an issue. My robot is not so repeatable that it will be able to align the holes on the end effector with the rods on the tool rack. This is what started to happen frequently. This was very disheartening. Time was running out and around the same time I got to know that I had to travel out of town for work. I came back two days before the day we were scheduled to leave for the Bay Area Maker Fair. I dismantled the robot, packed it in our check-in bag and cushioned it with towels. My anxiety was through the roof during the travel. I was worried that the bag would not be handled properly and the robot would get damaged. We wouldn't know until the day of the Maker Fair. Finally, the day of the Maker Fair was here. We were scheduled to be there for three days showing off our creation to everyone. I reassembled the robot at the venue. When it did its first homing sequence, I heaved a sigh of relief. Because my automatic end effector changing mechanism wasn't ready, I performed the end effector changes manually and showed people how the robot could pick and place items with two end effectors, a suction cup for items like a box with flat surfaces, and a gripper for items without flat surfaces like a screwdriver. Honestly, because the automatic end effector changer wasn't ready, coming into the Maker Fair, I was very bummed and disheartened. But looking at people's reactions, especially those of kids, energized me. I was able to see other cool projects, talk to very interesting people and make meaningful connections at the Maker Fair. Literally everyone, even the folks who were robotics pros were appreciative of the project. On our way back, I decided that I was going to make the automatic tool changer work. I was determined. The problem with the previous tool rack design was the rods that the robot had to align itself with did not allow for even minor misalignments. So I created this design in which even if the robot is slightly out of position, the tapers will guide it in place and allow it to locate the tool properly. Once the design was 3D printed, I tried it out. took a few attempts to get the motion sequence correct, but after a few attempts, it was quite consistent. I mean, as consistent as a 3D printed robot can be in performing a task that requires significant precision. And there you have it, a robot that can change its end effector depending on the type of object it is picking up. I plan to add some form of computer vision and object detection to this robot so that it knows what type of object it is picking up and then automatically chooses the right end effector. But that will have to wait for some other time and some other video. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.